morning, Irene. Terrible weather, eh? Now, what can I get you? And I hope we've got it. Oh, I wasn't really wanting anything, Isabel. Um, I will. I just wondered if you'd spoken yet to Jimmy about Sheila. Uh, yes, I have. And uh, I have to tell you, he's not very keen on the idea. Oh, why not? Well, I think he feels that that would be two nights in the week he would be on duty, so to speak. And it's not just that. I mean, you know what crossing the loch can be like in this weather, even in the daylight. Yes, I know. And I'd be worried myself if it was anybody else but Jimmy. It's just that it's so important to Sheila's future that she gets her hires. Important to her father, too. It might help him forget what's happened. Well, I don't think he'll do it. Look, maybe if he realised how much it meant to her. I don't know. I suppose if Sheila could try speaking to him herself. Oh, I don't think she would. Well, why not? It's her that's going to be affected. And he might find it harder to turn her down, you know, face to face. That hole in my bedroom ceiling. Oh, eh? You are going to repair it, aren't you? Oh, aye, aye. I'll do that for you, Mother, when I've got a minute to spare. You could do it now. Oh, what's all the rush? It's just a few slates that have come loose. I'll do it at the weekend. You've no idea what it's like trying to sleep with water dripping through the ceiling. Back away with you. You're not being kept awake. The water isn't coming through anywhere near your bed. It's not even as if the carpet was getting wet. It's all got into a tin bucket. Ping! Eh? Ping! That's the noise it makes when it drips through. Oh. I've no sooner got my head on the pillow and I'm just dozing off when ping! Oh, you and Jamie Stewart, you're two of a kind. Uh, no, 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 Lazy no. and selfish. Mother, that is slander, comparing me with Jamie Stewart. Fine you know there isn't a better run croft than this one in the whole county. Oh, you look after the steadings and the beasts well enough, I'll grant you that. But with your, it's with your own flesh and blood that you neglect things. Oh. Ping! Yeah. Anyway, it's not my business to do outside repairs to the house. Then whose business is it, then? It's the estates. That's what I pay them rent for. In that case, why did you try to fix the slates in the first place? Well, it, it seems such a small job. I, I didn't think it was worth bothering them at the time. Oh, but it's worth bothering them now, is it? When you've been made a mess of it and made it all worse. <sighs> Look, I did my best. There was only two slates missing when you started. There's a dozen now lying broken in the yard where they fell off the roof. Oh, look, look, Mother, I'm not going to stay in bandy words with you. I will have another look at the roof when I've got time. And if that doesn't work, well, then I'll have a word with Lorna Seaton and see about getting the work put in hand. And what's stopping you talking to Lorna Seaton now? I, I've, I've got other things to be doing. What other things? Well, if you must know, I've gone up to the stewards to see if Morag's got anything she needs doing. Oh. Oh, now, Dougal, Dougal, you mustn't let on to her that we were talking to you about her, her health. Oh, of course I won't. Ping. What? I, I, I'm going to do something about that, that ping when I get back. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. I, I, I'm going to swap the tin bucket for a plastic one. Have they actually arrested Brian Blair, then? No, no, not yet, but I suppose it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. I heard that uh, Sergeant Murray took all the fire lighters with him when he left the store yesterday. Boxes and boxes of them. I, I wonder why they didn't just arrest him there and then. Oh, they'll be building up a cast-iron case against him. Then they'll move in. Bring shame in the village. Well, it might get worse, Mr. Murder. Eh? Maybe they'll arrest Isabel as well. What would they do that for? She was selling the stolen property. You're right. That makes her an accomplice. But we don't have accomplices in Scotland, Mr. Murdoch. Oh, I'm sure we do. Ah, but they're not called that. My Mr. Mack was very well versed in legal matters, told me so. Folk are charged with being art and part. Is that a fact? It is. Art and part. Which shows how poetic we are compared with the English. Me. Andy, how are you going? I'm going round in circles here and finishing up with more ends than I started out with. Is the snow off yet? Ah, it's off for the time being. What's that supposed to be? Well, it's a knot. 
called a Turk's head. It's supposed to look pretty flashy. No comment. It's very therapeutic, you know. Well, here, let's see it. I could use some therapy. Oh, what's getting you done? Ah, it's my old man. Honestly, Jimmy, it's getting so I can't love with him anymore. How is he hitting the bottle? Ah, it's not just his boozing, or his whining at me for money to buy booze. He started pinching things. What things? My things. I can't leave anything lying about the house without it being pinched and sold. Come off it, Eddie. I'm not kidding, Jimmy. Have you ever had to sleep with your socks on? I have to. You're not trying to make me believe your old man nicks your socks. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I put my money in my socks and I'm sleeping. Oh, I see. Yeah. How's that? It was better when I gave you it. So what are you going to do? Pack my bags and leave. If he hasn't sold them by the time I get back. Leave? Leave and go where? I mean, where will you live? Uh, well, I was, I was wondering that. Uh, but I mean, this place is empty nights and weekends. Here? Thought you'd never ask. Oh, come on, Jimmy. It's just a place to doss down till I find somewhere else. I'll think about it, Eddie, okay? One, two, three. You've thought about it. So? Right. Okay, if you do me a favour in return. Oh, sure, anything. I want you to come on to the lifeboat committee. Oh, Jimmy, I don't think that's my sort of thing. I mean, points of order and the chair recognising the floor. I get it. Any favour I ask, right? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's really nice of you to ask, but... Well, what about the rest of the committee? They don't want the likes of me. Just you leave them to me. Is it on or not? <laughs> it's on. Right. Well, well, eh? Respectability at last seems possible. Oh, listen, do you mind if I use your phone? You don't waste much time making yourself at home, do you? <laughs> no, go on, help yourself. No, I just want to call Ken Calder. Ask him to bring my new car here instead of over to my father's house. The road's blocked up there. New car? Well, new in a manner of speaking. You're flying pretty high these days, aren't you? <laughs> well, I might be if Ken doesn't fix that petrol tank properly. Still, what can you expect for 50 quid? 50 quid. So. Here, what do you think you're doing? I'm just checking this fence for you. Your father hasn't fixed it properly. In this weather, you could have some losses if the sheep get out, you know. Dougal, are you feeling all right? Aye, fine, just fine. Then why are you behaving so oddly? There's nothing odd about wanting to help a neighbour, is there? Well, not for some people, no. And, and how are you feeling yourself? Much the same as usual. I, uh, I saw the doctor was going up to your place yesterday. Oh, that. Aye, well, he stopped by yesterday. Aye, well, I, I won't say any more about it. I, I know you've had a lot to put up with. I have that. And it's getting worse. Look, look now, you mustn't give up hope. It's wonderful what they can do nowadays. I'm used to it by now, Dougal. I mean, I've had to put up with it most of my life. Well, I'd just like to say how much I admire you for it. And if there's anything I can do, anything at all, you've only got to say the word. Hello, Mr. Murder. No, oh, I've come to see the old boiler. Is Mrs. Mac around? <clears throat> she is not, Mr. Mingus. And it would suit you to keep a civil tongue in your head. What? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean the real old boiler, the central heating. I promised Mrs. Mac I'd take a look at it. It needs fixing. It must be this bad weather. Aye, aye. She didn't mention you were coming about something. But uh, she's not here. Well, she be along, because I haven't got all day. She's gone to Blair's store to get her money back on some goods she purchased. Oh, aye. Here, that's no like it's to sell stuff that's bad. Not bad, Mr. Mingus. Stolen. What? Mrs. Mack wants her money back before the Blairs are taken away by the police. Now, why would the police take away the Blairs? Because they're art and part to the crime. They've been receiving stolen property. I'll bet Mrs. Mack told you that. I've never heard anything so daft in my life. I don't think I'm prepared to discuss it with you, Mr. Mingus. If you've got a job to do, I suggest you get on with it. Mrs. Mack almost hit the lunchtime closing because you're late. Well, I've definitely missed the lunchtime opening because I'm here. I hardly think that's any of my concern. Oh, is that so? Well, you listen here. I am mending this boiler for nothing. So she's got no right complaining about me being late. But 
If that's the way she wants it. Uh, Mr. Mingus, I didn't say she was complaining. She just happened to mention that you weren't here when you said you would be and uh, hoped you'd remembered. Oh, well. Now, that's better. Here. I've just remembered something. Oh, what's that? You're on the whole committee. I am. Uh-huh. Well, since I am doing this job for nothing and in my spare time, well, I don't get the drift of your meaning. Well, if the committee and their infinite wisdom decided that some small gesture of appreciation was in order, I, I wouldn't insult them by refusing it. You mean... A bung, a backhander. Money. Aye, money. I don't believe they would, and I'd certainly recommend against it. I'm sorry to hear that, Arthur. You don't have to address me by my Christian name, Mr. Mingus. Oh, but I like using it. Besides, now I have a choice. You see, I've also found out what the O stands for. <laughs> Snowed in this morning. Can I help you? You can. I want my money back for those fire lighters I bought from you. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, if they, if they weren't what you expected. I never got a chance to find out. The police confiscated them. As evidence, I said, sergeant money, stolen property. Well, yes, there has been a little misunderstanding. Oh, there's been a misunderstanding, all right, as well. I thought they were yours to sell. I was under that impression myself, if you say so. But I'm here to tell you, Isabel, it's the first time I ever had stolen property under my roof. Oh, then we have something in common, Mrs. Mack. It was my first time as well. Where did you get them, then? Brian bought them in Octarn. <laughs> I thought as much. And just why would you think as much? Reasons. Reasons. He had no idea they were stolen. Oh, no, of course not. No doubt he thought they'd fallen off the back of a lorry. The roads around here are quite bumpy. I hate to disappoint you, Mrs. Mack, but you'll be sorry to hear that Sergeant Murray thinks that Brian was the innocent party. Oh, does he now? Huh. Well, if that's true, the police are even more gullible than I thought. I want my money back now. Oh, hi. Just putting a bigger bulb in here. It's a bit dim. It's not the only thing that's a bit dim in here. What are you on about now? Fire lighters. Oh, I thought we'd exhausted the subject. We might have, but it's just gained a new lease of life. Mrs. Mack knows all about it. Oh, God, no. How did she find out? Oh, Sergeant Murray told her. Well, Sergeant Murray's got no right to oh, tell Come on, he'd every right, Brian. I sold her stolen goods, remember? He collected them as evidence. Oh, if she knows about it now, the whole of Glendarroch will know about it by tomorrow. Oh, God, suitably exaggerated, I suppose. I'm sorry, Isabel. I thought I used to be in sorry. As if it wasn't bad enough losing the money spent on them, now we're going to lose our reputations as well. Oh, come on, now you're the one that's exaggerating. Oh, I'm glad you think so. You know, she as good as hinted there wasn't an item in that shop that was honestly come by. What did she think we'd do, into hijacking lorries? No, oh, just shuggling them a bit till stuff drops off the back. Our name's going to be mud in this village. Ah, oh, not for long. Sergeant Murray said we're in the clear. As far as we're concerned, Brian... Some folk will think we're never in the clear. I don't know, we just get out of one bit of trouble and another one comes in its place. Well, look, I've said I'm sorry. I don't see what else I can do. You can be a dash sight more careful in the future. Oh, I was looking for Jimmy. I need bionic eyes to see him. He's gone across to town. In this weather? Uh, he's picking up a passenger. Just one? Just the one. Special delivery. Can I help? No, thanks, no. Try me and see. Well, it has to be Jimmy. It's to do with the ferry. I'm thinking about finishing my hires at night school in Octarn. They'll be enrolling soon. Oh, it's a good idea. It's a shame they weren't. Aye. Well, I'll need to get my name down soon if I decide to go ahead with it. So what's the problem? Transport. Jimmy isn't too keen on taking me across, but uh, 
I thought I might be able to talk him into it. Well, if he says no, then I might as well forget it. Oh, damn, it's too far to walk. Hey, Sheila, I'm getting a car. I mean, it's just an old jalopy, but, well, it's good enough to run you to Oh, damn. I could take you. No, I don't think so. Look, I'll come back tomorrow when Jimmy's here. Ah, right, suit yourself. Death or something. I've been shouting on you for ages. Oh, the weather's fairly bad, eh? Oh, there's some days that are just naturally bad at any time of the year. What's wrong with your face? There's nothing wrong with my face. It's got a nose in the middle and an eye on each side like anybody else's. It's maybe the mouth I should do something about. Huh. I've often thought so myself. But what made you realise it? Oh, Bob, I've been thinking about the way I've behaved. It's, it's meant to be a bit fun. But it doesn't always come out that way. Oh, well, I can't argue with that. Your behaviour has been pretty bad recently, but I'm prepared to overlook it. I don't mean you, you great hairy stort. I mean Morag. Oh, Morag. Well, the less said about that, the better. She should have put up with more from you than anybody else. You know, it's disgraceful the way you've kept her dangling all this time. Well, I can only say that if I'd known how fine and brave she was, I would never have done it. Oh, well, that's Morag for you. Heart of a lion, tongue of a shrew. Here. I don't think I like hearing you talking that way about her. No offence, Dougal. If you knew what that woman's going through, you'd bite your tongue out. I would. Uh, what is she going through? I don't think I can tell you that. I don't like betraying her confidence. Oh, come on, I'm a friend as well. Oh, are you now? I'm not so sure of that. And I'd rather walk alone if you don't mind. That's it. That's the ferry. Oh, might not be the QE2, but it does the job. You'll be Snedden. Oh, well. Was it you I talked to on the phone? Aye, aye, that's right. Uh, do you want to settle up now? How much? Oh, uh, ten pounds. Ten pounds? I don't want to buy the boat. That's just as well. it would set you back fifteen. Now, don't get smart with me, laddie. Now, look here, Mr. Snedden. I already told you that if I didn't get another book in, the price might be a bit stiff. You said it didn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. One passenger or a dozen, it still cost me as much in petrol and time to get to Octan and back. I want a receipt. No problem. It is quite a long journey, Mr. Sneden. And a wasted one. I've been up at the house. It's a mess. It's supposed to have been on repair and maintenance for the past year. But from what I've seen, there's been damn little repair, and even less maintenance. Well, as long as there's a room for me to move into, I don't mind. You'll move in when I tell you, and not before. The housekeeper I hired has uh, changed her mind. So I'll have to find another one before I can get the place opened up. It won't be the day or tomorrow. So where am I supposed to stay meantime? I've booked you into a place in Octarn. You can stay there till the house is ready. I'll have a lot to do, but... I suppose I'll have to take the time off and drive you out there. You're that busy, Mr. Snead. Maybe the ferryman would take me. <laughs> I'm sure he would, for another tenner. Put a plastic bag under it. That's what he said. It's very words. Well, I can well believe it. It's just a sort of daft thing he would say. You know, I have to see a state about the repairs before it starts to thaw. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, uh, hello Donald. You've been behaving yourself, eh? Are you ready to go home? No. Good boy. You just met Dougal down the road. What's happened to Morag? I didn't know anything had. Well, he seems to think there's something wrong with her. Uh, did he say what it was? Well, not so many words. I think it must be something serious, though. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice. It's all right. 
Dougal thinks that she's suffering from some illness. And that's all right. I don't think there's much to laugh about. Oh, don't be silly. There's nothing wrong with Moran. And where did he get the idea there was? Well, he just sort of misunderstood something that Dr. Wallace said. And we just didn't put him right, that's all. Ah, honestly, you'll stop at nothing, you two. <laughs> what about you with all that Katrina nonsense? Yes. That was just a wee joke. Well, so is this. Still, I'm surprised at Morag going along with it. Oh, but she doesn't know. Eh? And you're not to tell her. Or him. I promise, Bob. Dougal really is upset. Well, he will jump to conclusions. No, no, I think I should tell him. Don't you dare. Aye, all right. Well, when was I ever one to spoil a good joke? Especially when it's on Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a name? No, she hardly said a word the whole way across. Her name wasn't one of them. I mean, you, she did say she was going up to Letter Fallock Lodge. Or Shamid or something like that. Aye, some kind of staff, I'd guess. But if that was her boss that met her at the jetty, I don't fancy her job very much. He treated her like dirt, you know, he's that sort. Tight-fisted as well. I just about had to Indian arm wrestle with him to get the fear out of her. Oh, listen, the Sheila stopped him. Oh, eh? Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello again. Come on, Ian. Uh, what can I do for you now? Well, I know it's a bit inconvenient, but could you take me back to your town? No. Well, well, quitting already, eh? I can't say I blame you. Quitting? Aye. Well, you said you were going up to the lodge. Oh, yeah, but Mr. Snedden says the house isn't ready yet. Oh. So I'll have to stay in Ochtown for a couple of days. Oh, well, I could suggest a couple of quite decent bed and breakfast places. It's off season, but I'll have a walk. Uh, no, it's all right, thanks. Mr. Snedden's booked me into the Ochtown Arms. Oh, I see now. Well, if he's booked you in there, it can't be that much of a cheapskate. Well, well, just the same. I'll go and see him and get the return fare in advance. Save uh, any argument later. Oh, no, wait, no, that's not necessary. Anyways, go on. Oh. Here you are. Ten pounds. Isn't it? Uh, well, aye, but... Look, are you sure you'll get that back? Get it back from who? Well, from whoever's bought the estate. Oh, I see. Thanks, I'm sure I will. Oh, right, that's fine, then. You see, it's my husband that's just bought it. <laughs> 